Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how you can create this cool animation. You can obviously using it for loading and uh, the things that you will learn today is how to center elements in different ways and also how you can utilize transform origin property in CSS and keyframes to create this kind of cool movement, right? So let's get started. Uh, what I'm going to do, I am going to kotus.com, kodit as always, and I am going to create a new prototype. I will start with a container div, and then within that container, I will define a circle, or a div with a class circle. As always, I will center my container using position absolute and then left 50%, top 50%, and then using the transform property to translate it to minus 50% and minus 50% of its width and height. Right now, there is no width and height, so let's give it a width of 40 pixel, 400 pixel, and height of 400 pixel. Let's give it a background of red for now, so you can see that it is kind of centered in the page. I will change it to this layout, it's easier to work. So we have a container div and within that we have a circle, right? Now let's go for the circle. Uh, for the circle class, I'll give it a width of, let's say, 40 pixel and height of 40 pixel. I'll make sure that the position is absolute and then uh, I will give it a background of white. You can see there is this white, and then I'll give it a border radius of 50% uh, to make it a circle, as you can see. Uh, so there are different ways to center this element. One is actually, since we have position absolute, just use the left and top and transform translate to kind of center it. There is another way to do that by setting the margin to be auto and then give it a left of a really big number. And then the same for right and then top. As you can see right now, with giving a left and right of like really big numbers kind of centers horizontally and then top and bottom to get the same animation right now I want to create that kind of uh, circle animation so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a keyframes uh, let's call it anim and then I will say that um, 0% so I want the movement to be like this. So I have to move the transform origin maybe somewhere up here. I'm going to set the transform origin to be 50% on the in the x axis, which is pretty much the center here. But on the y axis, I'll say let's put it minus 100%, right? And then I'll set the transform rotate. I will initialize it to zero degrees, right? And then when I reach 50%, what I want to do is that I want to change the transform. I will set the transform origin uh, to be, again, 50% and minus 100%. So keeping that transform, or that transform uh, origin point up here. And then I will use the transform rotate this time to 360 degrees, right? So from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. And then I'm using this animation. Let's say animation. Oh, we have this anim. And then let's say 3 seconds. You already saw how it looks. And then I will set uh, it to be, let's say, infinite. And then, uh, so the repetition is like, the iteration count is infinite. So it's, it will just infinitely run it. And then I want the timing function to be ease in and out, right? So, and then what I want to do is that after, after this movement, I want this to go like on the other side, right? So what I need to do is that with a very little percentage, 
I will just change the transform origin instead of minus 100% I change it to 200% right so it, it should come down and resetting the rotation to 0 degree again right and then on 100% what I will do is that I'll copy the same thing and then I'll change this to 360 degrees right so you have this cool movement that we really needed right that's pretty much what we need so this is the first circle what I'm going to do is that I am going to use another circle right so the second circle in this uh, you know markup it's the last circle what I'm going to do is that I am going to say container circle and then last child which points to the second circle and I'll change the animation delay to be the half of the current duration which is 1.5 seconds right so as you can see you have this kind of movement but as you could imagine first the first one starts and then the second one starts and then the movement what I want to do is that I want to already start that delay by using a minus here it actually starts right away so you have this very cool movement for these two circles as you saw we have four circles what I want to do is that in order to create that kind of effect I need to define another div let's just I don't know let's call it first first set and then move these two circles inside of that right and then I'm gonna copy this again and then this is my second set so I have first set with two circles and second set with two circles so I have to modify a little bit my 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 CSS over here because it points to container circle last child so by default all the circles have these properties and this animation the only change I need to do is that since now I have another level of divs which is first child and second child what I will do is that I will say basically container and then the first divs the first level divs in that container and then the circle uh, or the last uh, div with the class circle in those right so now what this is really pointing is that by default all the circles are you know following this same CSS but the last circle in each of the divs under the container follows this one right so as you can see here you have this one which is the last circle in the first set or the first div after my container div and this one is also this last child with the class circle of the second div right so this pretty much points to the last uh, div in each of those sets right uh, or the last circle in those divs and now what I really need to do is that I'm gonna say change the orientation so what I want to say is that I want to now rotate this set 90 degrees right so these two right now are doing exactly the same thing but now I want to rotate this 90 degree right and how I do that I say the first level divs in my container so which is this one this this one and this one so I'm taking this one by using by using container div last child right and then I will say transform rotate 90 degrees right 90 degrees so now you can see there is this this kind of different movement that we have but in order to fix that problem what I need to do is that I need to say my uh, uh, first level divs which is referring to first set and second uh, set here I want them to be positioned absolute because by default they're relative and then I want to set the top to 50% and left to 50% right now you can see that we have this very cool animation right here right so now I'm gonna just change the background of the body to maybe something like uh, blue violet uh, 
here and then I will remove the background red over here so you have this very cool animation and then to create that, that glowy effect and that you know kind of attaching detaching effect I already have a tutorial on how to create those I will put the link already but we will use SVG filters right so what I'm gonna do is that I will create an SVG uh, tag here within that I have my definitions which include the filter that I want to define I'll give it an ID right let's let's call it good right and then within that I want to use um, SVG filters the first one is FE called FE Gaussian black right and then within that we have an STD deviation let's give it a 10 and then the input to this filter is well whatever I apply this goo filter to the element so it's my source graphic and then the result let's call it blur for now right so just just to show you how this gets effect if I get this ID of my filter and then assign it to the parent container all, all of these by using filter URL and then pass the ID of that you can see how that blur affects this graphic right and then what I'm gonna use in my SVG filters after this is that I am using FE color matrix right so this is another filter in SVG so the mode is of course a matrix and then it's important to get the output of this filter and set it as the input of this filter. How you do that, you define a result here to be blur and then you use that blur as the input over here, right? And then this, this uh, basically uh, filter uh, has this attribute mode matrix and then I will give it a value of actually a matrix. Again, I have a tutorial on this. I'll, I'll put the link down here somewhere so that you can click on it and go to that tutorial and learn it. But let's get started. So it's uh, the red first is RGBA. So one, zero, zero, zero. And then it's zero. Uh, so one, zero, 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 zero. And then it's zero, one, zero 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 and then it's zero zero one zero zero and then it's zero 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 and then here we have minus 80 and then let's say eight right so what happens here is that we have defined a some sort of a matrix over here Let's just put some divisions so we can understand how many are there. One, two, three, four. Uh, so this is my fifth, right? And then one, two, three, four, five. This is my second. One, two, uh, sorry, this is just about six. So I'm gonna just change it to this. So this is my uh, red, and then this is my alpha right so whoa look at that <laughs> all right so let's see what are we doing here so we get the std deviation of 10 then set the this one and f e color matrix mode matrix we have one zero 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 we have zero one zero 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 we have zero zero one zero zero and then we have uh, 0 0 uh, 0 minus 18 and 18 right which creates this kind of effect and then what I want to do is that I want to blend these right by using FE blend I will say my first in is the blur and the second in or the second input is my color matrix which I let's just uh, call this one goo and then I will use that goo here and this creates this kind of movement but as you can see there is something wrong here and let's figure out why because this is R G B 
right? So up until here, everything seems to be fine. And then we have this uh, value over here. Maybe we should just modify this because this maybe should be, let's say, 14. And maybe this is a better one. Yeah, so that was the mistake I made. There was a switch between uh, this because this, this is in order to add contrast to the alpha channel. Uh, so, so it multiplies the alpha channel by this value and then minus uh, 8 times 255, right? Which creates this cool animation, right? And the more important thing in order to uh, create that glowy, let me show you, I made a mistake here again, FE bend, it's actually FE blend, right? If I use FE blend, I have this cool glowing animation. So, again, just to go over, I define the filter. I use the Gaussian blur filter with the STD deviation of 10, which defines the value of it. So, if I choose 5, it's going to be less, right? And then, source graphic is my input or this container class that I applied the filter to. And then, we have color matrix. You know, with this syntax, you have to add like an attribute mode matrix and then values. Again, there's a tutorial on this, as I said, you can always watch that. And then what we want to do is that we, we want to blend this uh, color matrix filter, right, with the initial blur that was the input to that color matrix, right? And then that gives you this awesome glowing effect, right? So I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, it's a bit, you know, intermediate to advanced, but I really think that it was relatively simple if you followed up all of my tutorials, right? So for those of you who haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you like this tutorial, you know, like this, share it, and, you know, just help me continue what I'm doing. Uh, have a good day and night. Bye-bye.